Hey everybody, I'm back with another quick video before the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, I was really, really busy packing shipments and everything yesterday, trying to get as much stuff out during decent weather, what little decent weather we have left here in Wisconsin for the year. So as you can see, I got a lot of tubs open. Uh, those snakes all shipped out yesterday, and um, I have to go through and clean the tubs and get them ready for new snakes. And some of those new snakes are ones that I'm going to show you right now. So let's just get right into it. Uh, I've got four, what one? Four clutches to show you here. And uh, the first clutch is Albino Mojave to Albino Mojave. So I'm going for the Cherry Bomb, which is Albino Super Mojave. So this is the first one. I believe that's an Albino Mojave. And then here's another. Albino Mojaves are really nice looking when they get older. Um, you know, as babies, they kind of look similar, a little bit different pattern to a regular albino, but the colors aren't quite as intense as a typical, like nice high contrasted albino. But as they get older, they get a lot of really nice subtle yellows in them. They're really, really pretty as adults. Okay, so those are three albino Mojaves. These two are definitely, this one might just be kind of a striped looking albino. I think this one's a Mojave too, but it just has a little bit different color than these two. Okay, and then here we go. This is the albino super Mojave or cherry bomb. You can see the nice bright, bright red eyes. The nice overall, just nice white coloration. You know, normal Mojave usually has a darker gray head. This one's pretty white. So it looks very similar to the Albino Super Lesser that I hatched out a little while ago that I did show on a previous video. The, the whites are slightly different. Now it might be that this one's a little bit older than this one, but the colors are definitely a little bit different. Either way, I think they'll both grow up to be really nice, bright white snakes. And this one I know is a female. I'm not sure what this one is yet. This is a female too. So on both of these, I was hoping to hit on the male. So I'd like to replace my breeder albino lesser with an albino super lesser. And same thing with the breeder albino Mojave male. I'd like to replace it with a super, but I hit on two females this year. So... Not sure if I'm gonna keep them or not yet. Probably end up selling these and just try again this upcoming season, but we'll see. Okay, so I've been wanting to produce these for quite a long time. I was finally able to do it. A little disappointed I only hit on one, but that's just how the odds work sometimes, and that's okay. Okay, now, I have some other albino things to show you. This clutch will be from a Toffino Mojave bred to a pastel leopard het albino. So I only got one het in the clutch. That's a pastel leopard. Then I got a bunch of stuff. I, you know, and I mean, I, I don't know. I'd probably sound a little bit more knowledgeable and intelligent if I would actually like really study these things and maybe even let them grow up a bit before I showed them on a video. But it's easier for me to show them on a video before I get them all set up and dispersed throughout my collection. So um, I like to show a whole clutch at one time. But here are some of the others that I hatched out. So I don't know 100% sure what all these are. Like I said, I really haven't had a chance to go through them all that well. This one I'm pretty sure is a Toffino Leopard. Um, it's Toffinos and Albinos look very similar when they first hatch. Sometimes the Toffinos can have a very, very slightly lavender hue to their, to the white pattern. Um, but as they get bigger, then the Toffinos get more and more lavender. And, you know, by the time these guys are two months old, it's easy to tell what they are. But you could see the albino leopards usually have very distinct scales on their head. You could see those as compared to like this one. Look at the difference in the head scales. I noticed that a lot of the albino leopards, or really all the albino leopards, end up looking like that. And I think that this one's a top, you know, just from the general color. You know, you can see the difference in color between these two. I don't know if the, if the camera's going to pick it up, but 
This one's definitely a little bit more lavender than this one. So I would say, if I had to guess, this one's gonna be an albino, this one's gonna be a toffino, and this one's also a leopard. Um, so it was a toffino mojave bred to a pastel leopard head albino. So there can be both top, uh, toffinos and albinos in this clutch. Okay, now onwards to some of the other cool snakes in this clutch. I think that that is, um, let's see, a pastavi toffino, or toffino pastavi, I guess I would call it. It's got a, a the typical pretty white head that most albino pastels have when they hatch. And then but it's definitely got a, a general albino Mojave coloration and pattern. This guy right here, I think is the best of all worlds. I think, I'm pretty sure that this one's gonna end up being a toffino leopard mojave i don't think there's albino in this one i'm sure there's leopard in it i'm sure there's mojave in it and i think it's a topino as well so this guy or girl here let's see that is a boy so he may have to stay here i actually think i might have hatched one of these out last year so i might end up selling this one but at any rate that's a nice little pile of yellow snakes Okay, so I gotta go through this pretty quick. I got a lot of work to do today. Okay, this clutch here is from a pastel leopard het genetic stripe bred to a spinner blast genetic stripe. I think I've got all this figured out what these are. This one is a leopard bumblebee het genetic stripe. And this next one, I kind of teased a little bit on the last video, but I actually had it misidentified. I was thinking that this was a leopard bumblebee genetic stripe, but after comparing it to others that I see on Morph Market and on World of Ball Pythons, I'm pretty sure that this is just a regular bumblebee genetic stripe. I think if there was leopard in this, the pattern through here, although it's pretty dark, I think it would be a little bit more uniformly black and without as much blushing in here. I could be wrong on that though, but just from the pictures I saw of other bumblebee genetic stripes, I think that that's what that one is. Okay, so I'm gonna flip these back real quick. And then this one right here is a lemon blast genetic stripe. It's got a little bit darker of a pattern through here than what I usually see on them. And I haven't produced very many of those, but I think that this is just a regular leopard, or sorry, regular lemon blast genetic stripe. I don't think that there's leopard in it. But I'm not 100% sure. This one, I do think there's leopard in. This is a pastel genetic stripe, and it is a lot darker than any other pastel genetic stripe I've ever produced. There's no other combination or no other um, morph this could be really because it's not a regular pastel genetic stripe, and there's nothing else in the equation with the parents that would, that would uh, be anything other than leopard. So, you know, it's obviously not a pinstripe, it's not a spider, um, it's not just a pastel, and it is definitely a genetic stripe, so it's gotta be a leopard. I was hoping that the leopard genetic stripe was gonna come out a little brighter yellow than this, and that the darker, the thicker uh, striping on either side was gonna kind of extend all the way to the head uh, the way that a normal leopard genetic stripe does. I'm hoping that by adding fire into this, I can get the colors to come out a little bit more. And I'm also gonna try it with Orange Dream and Orange Dream Fire as well. So I've got a lot of leopard genetic stripe uh, combos in the works right now. So hopefully I'll produce some really nice looking uh, leopard genetic stripes in the future. I really, really like that more. I think having leopard and genetic stripe is the future of genetic stripes. And um, they should be more popular than what they are, uh, genetic stripes in general. And in my opinion, I really, really like them a lot but I'm hoping to just tweak the gene and get the right other genes in there with it to make something that really pops. Okay, so that is the Pastel Leopard Genetic Stripe. One more clutch, and this one kind of threw me through a loop. Okay, so I, tr I tried to breed a yellow belly pied to an orange dream enchi het pied. The weird thing was, is that my orange dream enchi 
het pied ended up being an orange dream enchi yellow belly het pied the reason why i know that is because i produced some ivories in this clutch here's an ivory now this could be enchi it also could be orange dream here's another one you could see the difference in color and pattern with these two. This one's much more white than yellow stripe down the back, still has the dark head. This one's got the yellow stripe down the back, but it's also got the lavender on either side of the stripe part way through. And then this one, I think that this is a, a pied. If I had to guess, I would say this is an orange dream uh, ivory pied. It's really, I mean, it's got large patches of white. Now, I kind of want to see how this grows and see if the pied white separates itself from the ivory white. You know, so you could really tell. But, I mean, you could see some yellow there. You could see some yellow there and intermittently throughout the body. But then there's large patches of solid white, too. So, I don't really know what the deal is with those. But I think I'm going to have to let some of these grow up a little bit. And uh, let's see exactly what genes are in there. Okay, so then I got this nice high white pied. Um, I don't, there may be yellow belly in that. You know, it. the problem with a lot of pieds, especially if you put fire in them, uh, this one does not have fire in it, but if you put fire in pieds, and even some without, they end up being so high white that you can't completely identify them. I mean, it you know, this one's got a little bit of nicer color right there, like where it look, could be yellow belly or orange dream, but the head color is pretty typical. So, you know, it, some high white pieds are really difficult. I've got a group, uh, this this whole rack here is are all pieds and pied combos, and I've probably got eight or 10 of them in there that I can't even tell what they are because they all look something like this one. So they're all basically dark head and solid white body, and they could have orange dream in there, they could have fire in there, they could have you know, yellow belly in there, or a number of other things, and I just can't tell. So it's a little frustrating. So anyway, I'm gonna take these and put them back in, and then I'm gonna show you the rest of the clutch. Okay, this one here, I believe, is a yellow belly enchi het pied. This one, I think, is an orange dream enchi, maybe a yellow belly, het pied. And then here, we have the orange dream enchi pied. And I'm not sure if there's yellow belly in that one or not, but he's, he or she is pretty low white, but that looks like a pied to me. And Enchi, Enchi's a gene that tends to bring out more pattern in pieds. So it's a lot more common to see an Enchi pie with just a really little bit of white on it like this one versus, um, versus one that's got a lot more white on it. So from the pictures that I saw uh, comparing with what some other breeders have in this project, I would say this is an Orange Dream Enchi pied. And there's the phone. It's the phone wearing every single time I want to make a video. At least the last few videos I've done, the phone's wrong. So, anyway, that is, uh, I think that's all I have for you today. I'm going to get to work and get these guys set up. And uh, move on to whatever else I got to do today. So, um, don't forget to check out my Black Friday Cyber Monday sale on my website. I've got a really good deal going on uh, that's uh, uh, starting on Thursday night. Um, it does look, I initially thought I would not be able to ship out this upcoming week, but it does look like the temperatures are going to be okay to ship out on December 3rd, which is a Tuesday, and December 4th, which is a Wednesday. So, any orders placed between now and December 2nd, I will schedule for one of those two days as long as the weather's okay on your end as well. So um, I always check the weather. I'm very careful about when I ship. Uh, it's really hard to ship in Wisconsin here in the winter time. It's just a nightmare most of the time to get sh any shipments out. But as of from what I could see in the forecast right now, it looks good to ship on the third or the fourth. So get your uh, purchases in, especially take advantage of those Black Friday 
uh, and Cyber Monday sales all, uh, sale going on all through the weekend. And uh, I've got a lot of great snakes, really good deals on them. I also have a clearance sale page on my website. I've got a lot of snakes there marked at 30 to 50% off. A lot of 2017 uh, snakes on there. So uh, yeah, definitely check it out. And my website is royalconstrictordesigns.com and I'll put that in the notes below as well. So happy shopping, have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll, I'll be back for, with another video very soon. Thanks.